I felt like I needed to uh, communicate. Let's say I wasn't happy with who I was, where I was from. I was an only child. I found myself kind of lonely sometimes. I basically looked to graffiti as something I wanted to become a part of. The energy was good. I could create a new identity, portray myself as that person. I came up with the name Futura 2000, loosely inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey, which came out in 1968. I was 13. Futura, the typeface, the car, the blender, the vacuum cleaner. Futura 2000 just seemed the right thing for me to be. I began tagging that up. I did create an identity around Futura 2000. No one necessarily knew me as Lenny. No one cared to know me as Lenny. I wasn't very important as Lenny, but I somehow gained more importance, not even prestige, but just personal respect as this uh, pseudonym, anonymous uh, alter ego. That's what I mean, alter ego. is really short, sharp shock of who you are and it's easier to get that around and get many of them around. So it's about coverage. The analogy of a dog pissing and marking his territory, in a sense it's kind of true. I mean you mark your territory and then you're you're happy to go back and check the scent. Every piece came from tagging. Like the piece is nothing more than a fat tag with outline and designs. Tagging is the lowest common denominator of a piecing. Like a, a piece takes a few hours, like a tag takes a few seconds. But um, you should try and apply as much skill into your tag as you're going to do into a piece. It's in your mind. And uh, sometimes uh, 24 hours a day you're thinking of it or doing something or what can I do tonight or what shall I make a piece or shall we go out and bomb somewhere. Well, it was just for fun, you know. Mostly not on uh, any new kind of fresh wall. Except public transport. That's, that's always possible. Always. It was uh, looking every second of uh, putting your name somewhere. And it, it's still fun to do it, you know. After all these years, it's uh, still funny. That's so strange. I finished about 20,000 cans. And that's no bullshit. They're cleaning a lot nowadays, but I'm sure that in 2000 uh, I'll still see some rhyme tags. I don't have any preferences or scruples, you know. Like, um, I mean, like I love looking at buildings, you know. But uh, that will not stop me uh, if I had the chance to to put a nice tag on on one. That's stupid, like to make a tag on the shirt or. Uh, I prefer like go go on the police station and make tag over there. For me, I take graffiti as an art, as an expressing of yourself. And when you do historical building, when you when you build something, and it's beautiful, I think that's the same, you know, because you put something in, in, from from you into it. We're in the mid midway between our form and totally vandalism. This is too human. This kind of stuff. The city, even before graffiti, Roma, it was crowded of names. Even if it's a political you know, group, or even if his, his girlfriend name, there will be always a, a, a guy who, who would start drawing his name. Two years ago I, I went to London for Christmas and um, I walked down Shaftesbury Avenue and like two days later like I walked through it and I see Dwayne tags and a few other local things. So now I know that some guy from Sweden passed through Shaftesbury Avenue between this and this date using this and this color and like uh, where it's placed and how it's placed and how big it is or how it's shaped gives you an, an idea of the movements he had to do to make it, you know. So the placement of the tag is really subtle, there's subtleties in it, as well as the thing of dangerous places, harder places, tags by police stations and risky, risky things like that. It is a minor contribution to the overall scene, and in some senses, you know, it doesn't look very appealing. But like I say, at the same time, there's nothing like a truck or a gate or some particular wall that just has nothing but tags, nothing very beautiful. It's a real snapshot of what the movement really is all about. 
and that is individuals writing their names on walls, expressing who they are in the most minute way, their tags. I wanted to be somebody, not to be a pop star or to be a big film star or to be anything big, but just a little somebody. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for doing that. I would not have chased that fucking rainbow, do you know what I mean? You know, I was Goldie before the goal. I was painting, I was Goldie, I was going out there painting the walls, you know what I mean? I was, I was getting known for painting. You want to put your name, which you recognise, somebody reads that fucking name and says, I know that kid. You, you saw sort of like, think these, this person has more to them as an individual. You build up a sub-character. Goldie's Goldie's right there. Me, I'm here. You make that character. That's what graffiti did for people. It gave people confidence. Some of the biggest writers, the most prolific writers I ever met, I'm like, hello. Fucking hell, is that the guy with some white kid's scraggly hair? So it's almost like um, I have agents working for me and I put them in different places around the city and they just, they just stand there and pose for me. And everyone walks by and they say, yeah, that's, that's me, that's Prime. You never lose that. What you do lose is time in life where you can actually do that. That's what you do lose. I am a person in society I go to work, I contribute, I pay my taxes. I'm a kind of like regular kind of person. I do all that shit that everybody else does. I go to work for one reason and one reason only, to get paid. My time outside of that is very valuable to me and I want to enjoy myself. And one of my hobbies is doing graffiti. Everyone's got a tag and if you've got ten tags on a shop shutter or on the side of a wall, none of those tags are really going to stand out unless it's somebody who's famous. So I kind of like I didn't want a tag, I wanted, I wanted like a symbol, something a little bit stronger than a tag. So you can just catch a glimpse of that and that's it, you, it, you, you recognise it, you know it's there, you've seen it and it's like yes, there it is, there's another one. And uh, it works. And I like, I like walking around and seeing my tag there and seeing it there and seeing one from back in 89 there and it's nice. People come up to me and say, yeah, I didn't realise you did that. It's like, just a little ego boost. It's like, yeah. There's not really many places in London you can go without seeing one of the traps. Um, they're, they're everywhere. Once you stop, no one's talking, you, uh, talking about you after a couple of months. You're dead, actually. So that's what you actually keeps, uh, that keeps you active. I mean, you have to do more, you have to do more, so people still speak about you. If you stop, you get, you, you're forgotten after a couple of years, you're forgotten, unless you were special. Though I don't get fame, I don't get paid, I have to do it once in a while, I have an idea and I have to do it. I'm not feeling confident if I, if I have an idea and I haven't done it. Because I'm always in fear, if I have an idea, someone might, might do it before me. I was never concerned, never concerned about getting paid for it. All I wanted was Thing. I'll be honest with you, I don't have tons of money, you know, from it, and it was just a, a, an ego trip of fame thing that, you know, hey, that's me. And during the course of time, what it did do is make a lot of people know me, and know of me, or maybe know me personally, or they're on. Uh, but it kept me busy, you know, that would be the answer, it kept me out of trouble. When I was on my own and I didn't have anything better to do, I could always have my pens and my paint to fall back on. I could sit in my house at 2 o'clock in the morning and say I'm going out for four hours. I didn't need to have company, I didn't need to have friends, I didn't need to have nothing. I just went out and done something that was instant satisfaction, free of charge. I was out there every single day without fail, tagging, bombing, whatever you want to call it, I was out there doing it. I used to get night buses to the far reaches of London, get off the night bus and walk home. Eight, nine, ten miles I would walk home and I would absolutely write on everything that was in my way. As a young person I, f I was shy and I didn't really maybe communicate with other people on a great level. But as I became well known for graffiti, when I met people that maybe I may not have had a lot to say to in the past, I met them as Drax. They already knew kind of 